Hey guys, we are back with some more LA Kings franchise mode, and in this one, we are going to continue the off well, finish the offseason and move into year number two. However, before we move on, there is one trade that I want to make because the two free agent signings that we have made will not completely fill out our cap to the point where we'll be above the cap floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade with the Calgary Flames for a certain Milan Lucic, who has two years left on a at 5.25 million on his salary. Figured he'd be the perfect contract to pick up so we can fill in that salary cap while also not giving up much and maybe even getting a draft pick back in return. So I think we can we can probably afford to give up Matt Waugh here. He's not making much, and I don't think he really has a future on this team, so we will send him in this deal, and we'll try to get, I don't know, a third-round pick back. I don't think we're getting a second. So, Wa for Lucic and a third to fill out the salary cap. Trade rejected, really? Okay. Thought they would want to give up Lucic's contract for cheap there, but apparently not. Okay, maybe we could get a fourth. Proposed trade? There you go. Trade accepted. So, now we just have to wait for the signings of Mr. Zidane Chara and Bobby Ryan. I believe them two together should fill out our cap just enough. And even if they don't, we can always make another one of those types of trades. And before we advance, figured I'd let you guys know, we have fired our associate and assistant coaches in the NHL. I approached a couple of better coaches in the coaching free agency who have better teaching grades so that we can get uh, hopefully some better growth out of our prospects. And with that out of the way, there's not much left that I really want to do because there wasn't too many assets of interest that were on the trade block that were available. And uh, everyone else in free agency, it, it just wouldn't make sense to get them. So we are simply going to move ahead, see if we get Char and Ryan, which we should. We, we offer them quite a bit of money. Oof. Our NHL associate coach turned us down for an AHL head coach role. That is unfortunate. We did get our assistant coach, though. We also got Bobby Ryan and Zidane Char. So looking at our cap space now, we are now at an 184 Remaining in cap space, so I would say we could probably make one more trade for a big contract, or not a big contract, but you know what I mean, overpaid, and that will allow us to have some flexibility during the year if we need to make trades. So here we're going to try to trade for France Nielsen from the Detroit Red Wings. He's got 5.25 on his contract for one more year, and we're also going to try to get a fourth in there for Isamont, some guy in our AHL team who... Frankly, he doesn't have a future here. 24 years of age. Medium top 9, 71 overall. May as well see if we can fill in the cap and get a fourth round pick back for him. Proposed trade? No. About a fifth? Nope. Sixth? Nope. The seventh? Please? No. Uh, I mean, there's not really any point in doing this. May as well just go out to free agency and get... <laughs> some some guy who's about to retire and that is exactly what we're gonna do Derek Waugh he is 38 years of age 72 overall doubt any NHL team will be going after him so we'll give him <laughs> not that much but I'm gonna say 9 million just to be safe there you go overpaying Derek Waugh like crazy but there wasn't much else we could have done that would have made sense I mean that doesn't technically make sense either but Whatever, we have to fill in the gap somehow. And our coaching staff is now all set for the NHL. Every single coach in our NHL team has an A for teaching. So that that should end up translating into more growth. Hopefully. So here we are at the start of year number two. Let's check out our roster and see what growth happens. So Quick is still an 83. Peterson's an 83 as well. So I guess maybe we roll with Peterson this year just to see if he can grow any more. He's got that starter potential, but he's already 26, so I, I don't know how much more he's going to be able to grow. But we may as well see what he can do. And on defense, you have Doughty, Chara, Mata, Clegg, Walker, Anderson, and Bjarnfot. Bjarnfot didn't grow at all. That's unfortunate. Dursey and Spence. Dur Spence really grew. I remember he was at, I think, like a 61 when the GM mode started. He drew, he grew tremendously last year. He's all the way up to a 77 he should be ready to go by next year if he keeps it, it keeps that up, or maybe even sometime this year, but I would prefer to keep him in the AHL for one more full year, as well as Dursey. 
McDermott, Phillips, Strand, and Movrar. And then at forward, you have Kopitar, 88. Turcotte is an 86 to start out his NHL career. Wow. Although he unfortunately does not fit into too much of our chemistry. Now, Kempe, he's an 85. So we have him at 2 million for one year. So that's a bargain, but he's definitely going to want a raise next year. Ryan at 82, Brown, Velarde, and Anderson, and Grundstrom all at 81s. Anderson Dolan at 80, Byfield's at 80, so I think we can officially say that he is an NHLer at this point. Keith Ho, 79 overall, fourth line forward. What do we do with Keith Ho? He fits in on the fourth line, but I don't think that's where I'd want to play him, and that's his role. Should we put him in the NHL, or should we actually play him in the NHL? I'd I'm not sure. He's not particularly great at anything, but he's just, he's very well-rounded. So I don't think he would struggle in the NHL, but I don't know if he would succeed either. And then, of course, you have Lucic and Wagner. And in the system, you have Medio, Kupari, Radish, Luff, Sodergran, Isamont. Okay, so these are the lines to start out. We have on the first line, Ryan, Kopitar, and Velarde. Second line, Kempe, Turcott, and Anderson. Third line, Grundstrom, Byfield, and Brown. Fourth line, Anderson, Dolan, Wagner, and Ho. Again, I don't know how I feel about Ho on that fourth line. I think I might just want to send him back to the AHL for a year. On defense, you have Bjarnfot with Doughty, Clegg with Mata, and then Char with Mikey Anderson with that plus three there. So I'm hoping that does something there for Mikey Anderson. Maybe it boosts Char up, which will also in turn boost up Anderson. On the power play, I decided to try a, a five-forward power play here. You got Kopitar, Turcotte, Grundstrom, Ryan, and Byfield. The only reason I'm doing this is because if we put any of our defensemen there, it only puts a plus one, and I'm trying to get that chemistry going, with Tur- especially with guys like Turcotte and Byfield. I, I wouldn't normally do a five-forward <laughs> power play, but this is a year where we're simply trying to grow our players. You got on the second power play unit, Anderson, Velarde, and Brown, and then Doughty and Mata. I guess I should take Brown off of there, and I'll put Kempe instead. That actually gets the plus one. Four-man power play, you got Turcotte, Ryan, Kopitar, and Doughty, and then Kempe, Brown, Clegg, and Mata. Penalty kill, you have Velarde, Anderson, Dolan, Chara, and Doughty, Anderson, Brown, Clegg, and Mata. Three-man penalty kill, Velarde, Doughty, Chara, Anderson, Dolan, Mata, and Clegg. Four and four, you have Kopitar, Turcotte, Doughty, and Chara. Kempe, Ryan, Clegg, and Mata. Anderson, Grundstrom, Anderson, and Bjarnfot. Three on three, you have Kopitar, Turcotte, Doughty. Kempe, Ryan, and Chara. Anderson, Grundstrom, and Mata. Extra attackers, Kopitar, and Turcotte. And the shootout, Kopitar, Kempe, Turcotte, Doughty, and Ryan. And in goal, Peterson and Quick. Scratched are Lucic and Walker. And those are the lines for the start of year number two. Once again, I don't know what to think about Ho on that fourth line. You guys let me know about that. But look in the AHL. Look what we have here on defense. Spence and McDermott creates the plus five, and Dursey and Strand also creates the plus five. So the AHL team is looking pretty good. So a little bit of a change up here. We're going to go with Keith Ho on the third line for the preseason and see how he does. I want to see him in action in the preseason, and I think the third line with Byfield and Grundstrom would be a good start for him. So I think I want to give Keith Ho one game against Pittsburgh, and that will be our first home game of the season, his first home game. And let's get to the third period here. First period, we have a goal for Alex Turcotte, his first ever NHL goal. There you go. And of course, Jay Bomeister had to spoil it for him by scoring after him in the first period. But the game's not over yet. It's only 1-1 after one. Second period... There you go, Keith Ho with his first NHL goal as well. Ho and Turcotte, two of the future pieces of these LA Kings, get their first NHL goals in the same game. But of course, Geno Malkin has to spoil Ho's first goal with a goal of his own. So getting into the third period now, if we are still tied or within a one goal difference with, I would say, five minutes left, we will get into it. And Evgeny Malkin gets a goal early in the third period on Jonathan Quick. And that is unfortunate. Power play for Pittsburgh. Not much doing. It's a long one. Oh my goodness. And we are... Oh, jeez. I was about to stop the simulation. But as the... Can you stop the simulation, please? I would like to go into the... Okay. <laughs> I wanted to go into the game, but EA, for some reason, wouldn't let me. And... There you go. 6-2 to two win for the Pittsburgh Penguins. 
unfortunate that the two kids had to have their game spoiled by the Pittsburgh Penguins there. Turcotte and Ho, they have their whole careers ahead of them. But nonetheless, that is a 62 loss. Why did the game not let me go in? <laughs> I kept trying to pause the simulation, but it kept going and going. It wouldn't let me stop. So that being said, I think we're going to end things off here. Let me know what you guys think of specifically of Keith Ho on the third line. I I am going to say I'm going to send him back to the AHL just to be certain so he can just dominate down there. Because, again, I don't think he'll struggle here, but I don't think he's going to be particularly good either. So I think I'd rather he just get first line time in the AHL and just tear it up. I think that might be the best option for him. But you guys let me know. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one when we continue your number two.